Hello and welcome to Barbara's Podcast. This is the show for women, all about health, nutrition, and wellness. It's the show that will empower you and inspire you to create a healthier lifestyle. Focus, and I'm very excited to introduce Dr. Maureen, a pediatrician, allergist, immunologist, life coach, author, who specializes in supporting parents of chronically ill children. Welcome, Dr. Maureen. Barbara, thank you for having me and allowing me to chat with you and share my story and tips with your audience. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Would you like to share with us a little bit about your background? Yeah, of course. So I will say, you know, as a kid, I really had two goals, the goals of being a mom and the goal of being a doctor. I got really blessed in my life and was able to accomplish both of those kind of childhood dreams. When I was in my pediatric residency, my second child was an infant at the time and was diagnosed with pediatric neuroblastoma, which is a type of pediatric cancer. My world came crashing down when that happened. And I went to a very kind of dark place. I learned a lot about life, learned a lot about parenting, learned a lot about being a physician through that experience, Um, thought with time that things were getting better. Then fast forward when my daughter turned 12, I got to be the physician to diagnose her with type 1 diabetes. Um, Again, all of those kind of thoughts and emotions came rushing back, the ones I had earlier when she had cancer. And I really didn't want to go back to that kind of dark place. So took a lot of steps to make sure that I was um, focused on not only taking care of her, but also helping myself and helping to build my own resilience. I found coaching, became a certified life coach, and now have kind of turned a real challenge into a gift by being able to share tips with Uh, parents who have gone through similar journeys and are having trouble with really finding joy in a life that is consumed by worry and overwhelm because their child has health challenges. I can imagine, I can imagine it must have been very difficult uh, for you and uh, for the whole family. Oh, for sure. And, you know, uh, some folks have said to me, well, it was probably easier because you were a doctor. And I will tell you, it wasn't easier. It was different that, you know, a lot of parents in those moments when they're faced with a diagnosis of their child are consumed with being overwhelmed because they don't know what to expect. Um, I knew what to expect, and that also created overwhelm and anxiety because I was focused on worrying about every complication that I had seen in my medical practice. So it was was a challenge. Yeah. Well, Dr. Maureen, you've mentioned the four C's, consciousness, curiosity, commitment, and courage as the foundation of resilience. Uh, Could you dive deeper into how these concepts can empower parents of chronically ill children to navigate the challenges they face and cultivate resilience in their lives? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, You know, a lot of resilience is built 
because we have control over the thoughts that our brain is giving us. Yeah. Our um, brain gives us lots of thoughts throughout the day. Um, some help us, some hold us back. Yeah. And um, certainly when parenting a chronically ill child, your brain can go off to the races on all of these thoughts that could happen or that you should have done. So the four C's, the first one is consciousness. And that consciousness is really being aware of those thoughts that um, that your brain is giving you. And I often teach my patients and clients really use journaling to be able to become aware of thoughts that are racing in your mind. The next C is curiosity. So asking yourself, does this thought help me or is it holding me back? Why am I thinking this thought? Um, being curious about things that we're thinking about really develops a good mindset and allows us to have control over our brain, which is a very powerful tool. Yeah. If we have thoughts, which we will when we're parenting a chronically ill child, um, that isn't serving us, then the next C to build resilience is uh, commitment. Um, that uh, commitment to really want to change um, and pick a thought that does serve us uh, is really helpful in making us stronger and giving us more control over our mind. And finally, courage. We know that when we're changing something in our lives, it takes courage to take that set step to make that change. And it really um, makes it so that we need to practice that skill and become stronger at it. And developing the muscle of our brain is no different. So it's not gonna change overnight, but building resilience takes time. And we need to really have that commitment and courage to practice the ability to um, control our mind. And um, receiving support is a crucial aspect for parents dealing with mm. health yes. issues. Can you share some practical strategies or examples that illustrate how parents can effect effectively um, end disagree and stand up for their children's needs, even in challenging situations? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, support when you're faced with uh, a child with health challenges becomes really uh, important, but it becomes really challenging because parents don't want to ask for help. I can use myself for as, as an example. When I was faced with my daughter having cancer, and then again when she had diabetes, I felt like if I asked for help, I was failing as a mom. And I told you that, you know, being a mom was like this childhood dream. So if I asked for help, I was failing at this childhood dream. I have learned and now teach that um, it is absolutely important to ask for help. It's not a sign of failure. It's really strength in evaluating how full your plate is. And if you need to ask for help, then ask because it builds courage for the next time. And it also allows you to understand you're actually in asking for help, helping another person because we all know that um, giving support to somebody actually fills our cups 
when we're able to serve someone else. So allowing somebody that opportunity to help you can be very beneficial to their lives, along with being beneficial to your life too. You also asked about, um, you know, disagreeing. And I will say I have learned a lot about advocating and, you know, the challenges with my daughter uh, have really taught me how to be a good advocate for my children and for myself because before having all these challenges, I felt like advocating meant disagreeing. And sometimes it does, but disagreements don't need to be negative. Disagreeing with somebody just means we're being curious about something. So what I mean by that is, if you're in a healthcare provider's office and they give a treatment plan and it's not really something that you agree with, it may be right or it may be not right. And the way to handle it is saying, you know, I hear what you're saying, but can you explain that a little bit more? Because that's not exactly what I thought would happen here. And by approaching it with curiosity, it allows both parties to kind of grow in understanding and trust. And it really helps to build a good relationship with the medical team to allow shared decision making for a treatment plan for their child or themselves, etc. Which is very important. Yeah. And, you know, I, I also I face folks who really think that, you know, doctors are on this pedestal. And I would actually say that is a thought that gets us into trouble. Like doctors are humans just like everybody else, which means they can be right some of the time, they can be wrong some of the time, they can have good days, they can have bad days. And having them on a pedestal um, gives us this perception that they are never wrong and um, it's hard to question them. Um, so having a better view where they're perceived as equals and going into that visit, understanding their equals allows a better outcome when advocating for someone. Absolutely. And I think um, another side is, you know your child better than they do. Absolutely. Yes, because you're with your kid all the time. So, you know, and it's sometimes doctors may not be able to make a diagnosis right away. And it's frustrating. I know because being on the doctor's side of things, I have had to share in that frustration with families when a diagnosis wasn't visible right in the immediate time frame. But as parents, we can say, okay, I understand a diagnosis isn't um, able to be made right now, but what should I be watching for? When should I come back to see you? And so again, being curious and getting a good understanding without being emotional about it and, and trying to keep the frustration at bay is very helpful in providing the best care for the child. Yes. Well, given your personal experience as a parent um, of a pediatric neuroblastoma survivor and type 1 diabetic, how has this journey influenced your approach as both a pediatrician and a life coach? Yeah, so um, I really now understand that 
if we face challenges in our lives, that we have a choice. And that choice is, you know, we can curl up in a ball and pretend that it isn't happening and have life happen to us, or we can look at that challenge as it is a gift. It may not be really visible on how it's a gift right in the moment, but I'm going to accept the fact that it is a gift. I'm going to grow from this and have life happen for us. So that kind of um, perspective really allows us to um, understand that we're not victims in this life. And that has really allowed me to be a better mom and teach my children about being resilient, um, being a better doctor and being able to teach my patients about how to advocate for themselves, um, being a better life coach and being able to share a perspective that is not only as a parent, but also as a medical provider. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine how overwhelming it must be for parents caring for a chronically ill child. Uh, could you share any some practical advice for parents? Yeah, you know, I would say a very important thing to hear is they need to make time daily for themselves. And when I say that, um, folks immediately think, I don't have time for a spa day. And I'm not talking about creating every day should be a spa day, but creating and carving out a few minutes of time to meditate or journal or um, just being quiet with a book um, just allows the parent to get grounded and take care of themselves. Parents often think it's a luxury, but I want your audience to hear that it's a necessity, that it allows us to be able to care for our child better because we are whole and have taken care of ourselves. It's kind of similar to, you know, what flight attendants say on the airplane, right? Yeah. That they um, tell us, put your oxygen mask on first before you help a child. And um, that's so true in everything that we do in life, especially when it comes to parenting a child with health challenges. We need to spend a few minutes every day taking care of ourselves so that we are 100% for our child. Yes, um, it's, it's a priority. Absolutely. Because when we charge our batteries, then we can care for our children better. You'll right. Have patience and yeah. more to give. Right. But when we don't make it a priority and we put it on the to do list and think we'll get to it, life is overwhelming and our to do list continues to grow and it will get knocked off to the bottom. So, really, starting it as a daily habit that has priority is so important. I call it, you take a Zen moment. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, balancing the role of a caregiver yeah, with the self care that we said is, is a challenge. Yes. Absolutely. So, well, in closing, um, could you share with our listeners how they can get in touch with you? Oh, absolutely. So a couple of different ways. I um, have a book on Amazon uh, that is called Reclaiming Life, a yeah. guide for parents of chronically ill children um, by Maureen Michelle. And they can find me there. I have a website, 
MaureenMichelleMD.com. And I'm also on Instagram as MaureenMichelleMD. It was lovely having you. Barbara, this was great. I love the opportunity to share tips and I appreciate you for allowing me to chat with your audience and you for a few minutes. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Barbara's podcast. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter or e-courses. Celebrate life and see you at the next episode.